So now continuing the theme of connecting customers and, and data, where we're going to hear from uh, Robin Ng and uh, Matthew Rawbone from uh, Soprano Design. And they're going to be talking to us about uh, engaging your customers through mobile interactions. So welcome, Matt and Robin. Thanks, John. Thanks, John. Can I just check that uh, you can uh, your screen comes up OK and uh, we can all see it clearly? That's great. Yeah, it looks all right. right. Over to you. Thanks Excellent. Much, John. Um, yep, go ahead, Matt. So thank you everyone for joining today. Soprano is very excited to be at this event. So and we and we thank John and his team for organizing it. But we also thank everyone on the out there listening and watching us for attending this session. We are going to talk for engaging our customers through mobile interactions. So firstly, to introduce myself, my name is Matt Rawbone. I'm the head of sales for Asia for Soprano Design based out of Singapore. My responsibility for Soprano Design is about our sales performance across Asia, but mainly it's for the customer experience that those customers have with Soprano Design. I've been in this industry for a long time. I've worked for some of the major network operators in Vodafone, Telefonica, and NTT, but it's, it's really, uh, I suppose, encouraging and exciting to work for a company like Soprano Design who's really out there at the sort of cutting edge of um, mobile interactions with their customers. So I'm looking forward to this presentation with you all today. And uh, my name is Robin Ng, um, Senior Vice President of APAC for Partnerships. So uh, I take care of our channel partners uh, in the APAC region, including ENZ in Asia, and I've been in the mobile industry for more than 20 years. Um, our, our key partners in, in the region, in ENZ, we have um, Telstra and Optus as our partners in Australia. Vodafone in New Zealand, Starhub in Singapore, Cellcom in Malaysia, Spun in the Philippines. Right? And today, I mean, uh, we, are, we are doing this presentation. We hope to meet um, potential partners that we can engage with in countries that we are not operating in today in Asia. All right, so why are we here today? The company Soprano has been in the market. We, have, we were established in year 1994, so that, that is like 27 years ago. And we have been living and breathing mobile interactions ever since then. So we have a wealth of experience. We have lots of um, interactions with our own customers. We get feedback requests from customers all the time. And, and today we are really honored to be named by 451 Research just recently in February as uh, one of the top CPAS provided to watch out for in 2021. And likewise, IDC cited Soprano as uh, the most comprehensive government citizen communication platform available in the market. So we, we look forward in today's session to share some of these experiences we have to um, hopefully help you plan your customer engagement strategy. Excellent, thank you, Robin. So what we're looking to cover today is the future of customer engagement from a mobile interactions point of view, which is ex exactly where our sweet spot is and where we work with a large number of customers across Asia. We're also gonna touch on a customer success story of a, of a large uh, resort across Asia that's starting to look at the real forefront of what mobile interactions is within the customer experience world. And then I believe, John, we've got some time for some questions and answers at the end. Thanks, Matt. So uh, what is the future of customer engagement? We, we kind of just, uh, we broke it up into um, three major categories. Um, so we'll start with um, talking about customers' digital experience and how this is defining the customer journey. Um, what kind of channel should be engaging with the customers? And how, how do we stitch everything together to, uh, to make sure that we have comprehensive uh, solution for the customers where we, we have massive amount of data that we can track and provide a very customized uh, experience for the customers. So I'll, I'll hand over to Matt to talk a bit more about the first category. So the future of customer CPAS engagement. So I spend a lot of my time in front of customers. I spend a lot of my time talking to customers with our teams about how they engage and deliver the best customer experience they can. And what's really interesting is they talk about how they deliver it and what information they deliver. And I, I was recently uh, involved in, in a scenario that I wanted to talk through about what we mean and what it might look like in this world in the future. So I went out for a run this morning as an example, and I got I got back and 
My running shoes were just not feeling great. I had limited time before I flew out the door. So I quickly had a look on the Nike website and I just wanted to know what time their stores open because I've got a busy day and I wanted to see if I could quickly race in there and pick up some shoes. So I asked the, the chat bot that was there, you know, what time does your store on Orchard Road open? So the normal engagement you get is our store opens at 10 o'clock um, to nine o'clock. You know, that, that, that's great. That, that absolutely gives me the answer of what I want. But the conversations that we're now starting to have with customers is, hi, Matt, how are you going? Look, we see that you've been out for a run this morning. I see that your shoes from the Nike app, running app that you use has done 300 kilometers. So we understand that you're looking for a new pair. We know from your buying history that you're a size 12 and you're looking at the Orchard Road store. Just to let you know, these three models are in store and we can hold them for you to come and try them on when you come in. Please let us know. Now, in this stage, I've actually had to start, you know, in my grab to get into the office. So that conversation seamlessly transfers to WhatsApp because that's my preferred um, communication tool. So then the whole history of that conversation comes onto my WhatsApp tool and I can continue that conversation and confirm the time and get the best customer experience I can. So it, it's a really interesting change in the dynamics of that conversation from simply the stores open to giving me a really fantastic customer experience against alongside the tool that I want to use when I want to use it and keeping me live and updated, um, which absolutely builds loyalty for me as a customer. So that's how we see uh, the sort of future of customer experience and customer engagement over multiple devices. Uh, back to you, Robin. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Matt, for um, that interesting sharing of um, automation in terms of uh, customer engagement. So you mentioned, Matt, you mentioned about channels, right? I uh, mentioned about uh, which channels is um, you, you, you're probably interested in WhatsApp because you, are, you, know, you, you like WhatsApp, right? So um, the next section uh, I'm going to cover here is probably a bit more about what kind of channels do we need to use to engage with customers. Well, traditionally, as we all are very familiar with, um, businesses are typically using just just emails and SMS texts to, to engage the customers in the past. But today, from, from the engagement that we are you know, having with our customers, from the feedback we're getting from our customers, this is definitely a tipping point for us now. Right? This is a time where customers they are driving their own interaction. Right? So as, as a business, we need to interact with the customers using channels that the customers prefer. Right. So in, in different markets, we have a preferred channel and within the same market, sometimes we have customers divided. Some would prefer WhatsApp, some prefers you know, other form of IP messaging and so on. But, but it is clear that the business has to listen to the customer and understand what kind of uh, channel they want and deliver the messages and interactions through the channel the customers prefer. And not just that. But having a standalone platform has its limitation, so it's really important. Our, our customers have told us that they want to connect um, their, their various systems so that they can deliver all these mobile interactions and engagement to one single platform. And, and why is that important? Right, that's, that's where you track the customer's journey. Right, your customer could be um, talking to your um, customer service officers one day, and the next day they could be talking to your sales and marketing people. So it's really important for us to to record all these um, interactions at one place. So you have a wealth of data that you can use to, um, um, to create this uh, very data-driven, customized experience for customers. And over to you, Matt, to talk about investment. Thanks, Robin. I think what I take out from that last slide, Robin, that you clearly discussed was the tipping point of how users are, are changing from it being driven from the customer back to being driven by, or sorry, driven by the company to be driven by the customer. And we need to communicate over the channel that they choose. And I guess that that leads to, you know, if we get that right, and this is what our customers are saying to us, they get a true 24 seven customer service. So it's not just answering standard questions, so to speak, it's really engaging using AI, et cetera, to give accurate information at, at real time. Which, is, uh, which leads to what we all know is, is a much more cost-effective business model. It increases your revenue because it builds that customer loyalty. And then you have that interactive customer engagement, which means that those customers are with us long-term, which is the, absolutely the result our customers keep telling us is what they're looking for.
So that, that then leads in nicely to um, a customer that we're working with, which is a, a leading resort in Asia, and it's using CPAS um, to drive its engagement. So when, when we started talking to this company, it's, uh, this resort has a casino, it has a hotel, it has conference facilities. They were very much talking to their customers in a silo engagement. So the different teams within their business were not joined up. They had an events and promotion, pushing out messages across SMS to particular users. They had a loyalty program for the hotel. They had a loyalty program for the casino that, that wasn't as joined up as they would like it to be. And then they had one-time pin for specific requirements that they had within the casino. And what, when we started talking to them, they were like, this, this is not just not joined up. So what is it and how can we engage more with our customers. Now, COVID had quite a large impact on it because this hotel is, is one of the busiest in Asia. And even during the COVID process or COVID last 12 months, they've still seen their footfall across their premise because it's a destination still be at quite a high rate. So the first thing they wanted to do is how do we engage with these customers on site? And how do we ensure that we are following the COVID rules of keeping people apart, one to two meters apart, keeping people not congregating around a check-in environment. How do we communicate with those customers in the best possible way? And then taking this a step further is once they've been through that check-in process, how do we then engage with them to have interactions with them on all of our facilities in a two-way manner, which means they don't congregate in one particular place. So the next challenge they had is, okay, we can do that on an app, we can do that on SMS, but people are on the move all the time. So how do we communicate them over the channels that work best for them? Which is where we started talking to them about seamless on omni-channel interactions. The third and final one was, and then if all else fails, how do we then communicate with those customers on a voice situation if that has to be the way that is is the most seamless for that customer so they were really looking at the leading edge technology on how they could engage with their customers in the most seamless way with a driver in the background saying we can't have everyone congregating in one place due to the covert rules and regulations it actually led to a you know a very interesting conversations about what they're doing and how they're doing it. We then started talking to them about what's next. So what, one of the key success factors for them is how do we bring all of our assets together, how we engage with all of our customers across the channel that they decide by absolutely building loyalty? How do we engage with customers before they arrive, whilst they're on, on site, and then build the loyalty again once they've been on our facilities and assets. You know, it's all about the mobile interaction on the best possible solution for the customer, which is the theme about what we're talking about today. And then they're always challenging us on how do we offer the best digital experience for the customer in a way that they become very easy to do business with. So we are continually talking to them about the different channels, at the moment, they're not having the international travelers coming into their assets, but what they are talking about is looking at the different technologies that are predominantly used and how we incorporate them to make sure that they are joined up across all their assets, but they're also seen as a digital leader by the customers meeting all of their requirements in the most seamless way. Thanks, Matt, for that very interesting, interesting um, you know, reference to our one of the key customers that we have in, in this region. Right. So, um, well, in, in summary, this chart very much summarized what we have been doing with the customers uh, for the past few years to help them digitally transform their operations and workflows. So essentially, we we take customers' insight, right, and to engage the customers using trusted, meaningful interactions to deliver the right information uh, using the right channel and at the right time to these customers. Right? So this is essentially what we do um, to help our customers um, 
engage their, their own customers in a meaningful way. And that's pretty much what we have today um, in terms of um, our discussion on customer engagement. So I, I believe, uh, John, right now we are moving into a question and answers. Hi, thanks very much, um, Matt and, and Robin. Um, I, I think there are a number of elements uh, I'm interested in just uh, in exploring here uh, because you've got, um, you painted the picture of, you know, the, the growth of uh, a customer engagement through, uh, through, through mobile in, in particular. And I guess particularly uh, traditional companies um, have, have, have realized that it's not enough to have a contact center. You know, 20, 20 30 years ago, um, uh, companies were, were assembling contact centers uh, and they were um, in order to um, receive uh, incoming, inquiry, in incoming inquiries for things. And then, then they started to move a little bit more predictive using predictive dialers to, uh, to, for, for customer outreach. But I, I think the, the picture you painted is, is more of a, because customers are always on, um, uh, people are always on with, with, their, with their mobiles, they expect uh, the companies that they deal with to also be always on. And uh, for a company that hasn't been always on previously, they might have had, uh, you know, an IVR before that customers can contact uh, after hours. Um, what are the um, what are the steps that you see firms that need to take in order to develop that um, that interactivity uh, through the channels that the um, their customers prefer? and uh in the time frame that that they occur where where, where do where do organizations uh really, really need to start when they've only just begun their their digitization journey yeah look it's it's a great question and it's from, from our point of view it's about really understanding who their customers are firstly and and what they are trying to achieve what the interactions they have today and then painting the picture of being really easy to do business with, being accessible and talking through the different technologies that are available today and, and how we're seeing them being used in the, in the marketplace right now. So um, it, it's really about taking that customer back to understand what the benefit to them is of that interaction with the customer to see the need and requirement to change versus what they may be delivering today and then talking to them about how we go along the plans of and, and, I, and i'm not a massive fan of the word journey but it, it is a journey of getting them across the different technologies that is possible and out there mm -hmm. so i mean companies most probably companies would probably recognize that they don't communicate with their customers enough but some of them may be wary about just pushing information that customers um, may uh, may get annoyed with. They don't they don't want to annoy their customers. Uh, so finding the the balance and and also the what what I guess to your point about uh, finding out what customers are actually uh, interested in in that moment is is more valuable than simply pushing information about the whole range of products and services that a company can uh, can provide because m many of those in that moment, the customer may not be interested in. So, what, so what are the pieces that they need to put together in order to recognize, okay, a, a customer may, may have a range of objectives in, in dealing with a company, but in a particular moment in time, have a, have a certain need. Well, um, John, um, that's a very good question, right? Um, while today um, businesses may be wary about over-engaging the customers, right? Customers may be going through marketing fatigue. So they the don't key here is the power. Yeah, exactly. Yep. So the, the power here is this uh, data-driven, customized customer experience. So that's where it's really powerful. If businesses engage the customers using one single platform, be it sales and marketing, be it customer services and whatsoever. Right, so the business will have information about what the customer is interested in, 
And you know, right? If if you are keen on golf, if we send you some nice discount vouchers to have a eight in hole session, you'd be very keen to read more about it to understand more. But if you if you are a golfer and you, you send you some tennis records offer, you're probably not interested in it. So it's to really send the right information to the right customer at the right time. So that is the gist of um, having an omni-channel C pair solution that is really powerful. Mm -hmm. Well, and I guess that also needs to link in with uh, with the CRM system because this is where uh, the previous pattern of engagements with the customer uh, are recorded, and and also the the customer preferences. So the the exactly. different components certainly the the communication aspect is important, but then the knowledge base about that customer and their previous interactions with the firm, uh, their um, their, their spending patterns or the inter interaction patterns, the types of, of, of transactions that they, they engage with. What are the sort of other things that um, the, um, so where, where, where does this fit in the sort of company's marketing stack of, um, of, of elements that they need to draw? So for me, it's, and I use the Nike example of where they're kind of heading if you look at the nike running app i have to put in all my details around my shoes etc of what i'm doing they can see the distances i'm running so they're starting to set themselves up to be able to proactively build loyalty with me but then to proactively market to me at the right time knowing the sort of distance i'm running and when i'm running and it's it's about using that ai information to say okay Matt's, you know, three or 400 kilometers into his shoes. We know from Matt's spend at looking at his CRM package that he buys, a sh buys shoes every three or 400 kilometers. So then we have a, I suppose, educated conversation with me over the channel that, that I like to, to use, which is my example from is WhatsApp at the moment. So they can have a, a back and forth conversation and proactively market to me to build and keep my loyalty because I'll be like, well, actually, you're hitting me at the right time when I am considering looking at my options. So it's about that proactive marketing mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. So I guess it means that you need the connectivity, not just for the, the communications aspect, but into the, the data that, um, that the company is, is storing and you need access to that data, linking it with the, um, the transactions that the, the customer is, is uh, in, uh, engaging with the with the company but perhaps also other other sources as well so okay i mean that's um that's that's a useful uh, sort of picture that really there there are different building blocks that need to be assembled in order to create that that total customer uh, experience so uh thanks thanks very much for for sharing that no worries a pleasure and um well here are our contacts Right, uh, myself, uh, Robin, and Matt. So our contacts are here uh, for, for those who are, just if you are um, listening in, who are keen to um, understand more, we are more than happy to um, arrange for a call to, to have a deeper discussion. So uh, please feel free to reach out to uh, either myself or Matt. Okay, thanks very much. Brilliant, John. Thank, Thank you very you. much, John.